Hey guys, I'm Wayne Baker and I'm one of the therapists that participates in the EMS weekends every month. Today we're going to talk about why women have affairs. Generally, research shows that roughly half of all marriages or committed relationship will experience one partner or both that engage in sexual activity outside of the relationship. If you've been reading or watching any of the videos or the materials that we have on the Affair Recovery website, you know that we define infidelity as the keeping of secrets. I like this definition of infidelity keeping secrets for a couple of reasons. It speaks to the most fundamental component of what happens when there's an affair. There's this sense of, of betrayed safety and trust when there's been an infidelity. I work with people every day and with, for the betrayed spouse, whether they're male or female, what we know is that um, it's any kind of lie and what I don't know are the worst components of it. So it's the secret, um, whether it's a lie of omission or commission or the, the, some details that I don't know, those are the worst components of this, whether the a man has had an affair or the woman has had an affair. The other thing I like about this definition of infidelity is that it encompasses both online affairs uh, through uh, dating apps or chat rooms um, and also real world affairs where there's been uh, an emotional affair with a coworker and it never got physical or sexual and then to to long-term um, sexual and emotional affairs. I think it also helps us understand that when the lying started to either accommodate or cover up the affair, that that's part of the biggest offense as well. It's not just the affair. So with all of that as a foundation, I, I realize it doesn't address why women have affairs or what happens when a woman has an affair. But I wanted to lay that as groundwork, as a foundation for what I wanna talk about um, today is why women stray or have an affair. Typically women have affairs for one or more reasons. And I'm gonna list a several that I see in my practice. One is that women feel neglected or taken for granted. Um, they're not valued for who they are. And so when that happens, they are susceptible to either advances from some other man, or they may go out and seek attention, not fully wanting to have an affair, but that attention or that connection feels really good to any one of us when that's happening. Another reason why women have affairs is that they crave intimacy. Just, just look at the relationships that women have with one another, whether they go have coffee, a group of them or they'll go have brunch or they'll go out for drinks and it's just women they're not doing anything inappropriate but they love and they crave that uh, that connection via conversation that's part of them and when that's lacking at home um, again they may go out and look for it somewhere else another reason why women have affairs that i hear in my practice is they get overwhelmed i'm working with a woman right now who um, is overwhelmed by the needs of being a, a caregiver for her aging parents. And she's got kids at home. She's, she's a taxi service for her kids and she's cleaning and she's cooking and she's making the grocery list. And then she's going to the grocery store and she would just love it if somebody would come alongside and help her, but she's feeling overwhelmed. And she, she said, Wayne, I feel so susceptible to have an affair. If one man pays kind attention to me, I'm afraid of what I might do. So I hear that and see that all the time. Another reason why women have affairs possibly is because they're lonely. And there may be a, um, some very good reasons for that, that their husbands work really hard to provide for the family, or he may have to travel frequently for, for business. So she's left at home alone, raising kids mostly by herself. And there's no, 
meaningful, adult, consistent connection. That's a big reason why, I, why I've seen it in my practice. Another possibility for uh, affairs, and, and you see this in certain cultures or subcultures of our society, is that there's so many needs placed on this one relationship that you're there to meet each other's needs 24-7, 365 days a year. And truthfully, none of us are ever designed to do that. Whether she's placing that, those needs on him or he's placing them on her, it's, you need community and you need connection from various sources that are really healthy um, and supportive of the marriage. Another reason why women have affairs is, is that if they experienced any childhood trauma or even trauma in their adolescence or early adulthood, especially if there was some sexual trauma, they may be acting out again, subconsciously, of course, in an effort to, to heal or fix or control that situation. That situation really needs uh, help from a professional. All of these do, um, but that one in particular. And one last reason that I think women have affairs, and I see this one in my office almost as often as I do the lonely one, is when she's married to an angry man. His rage or his anger is, number one, it's the, the biggest libido killer in a relationship, and it will drive her heart away faster than anything else I know. I would say that most women, just like most men, don't realize the impact of an affair, whether emotional or physical or sexual, is gonna have on the primary relationship at the very beginning. Um, hormones are strong and they can carry us away so quickly. But it's the keeping of secrets, remember, is the biggest infidelity. So it's the time of connection and talking about what you need and what you can offer. Doing those small little things of, uh, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, of having fun together and talking are so vitally important. Men don't think they're as important um, as women do, but they're just as important to us as they are to them. If a couple chooses to recover from an infidelity, regardless of who's had it, whether a woman or a man, and do the hard work through individual counseling, couples counseling, and there's a great resource on the Affair Recovery website called Hope for Healing. Those kinds of resources can really help a couple navigate through these murky waters of infidelity recovery. I know it sounds crazy to say it, that you might be thankful for it one, one day in the distant future because you'll both have to look at things that you never had to look at in your own work, in your own self, and in the patterns and in the relationship and you'll have much more connection and intimacy than you thought was possible or that you dreamed of once upon a time. So I hope this has been helpful. And through this process, you can learn that the crisis can be turned around and uh, the marriage can thrive and be better than it ever was.